Is it worth converting a clack time clock valve to a fully metered clack five button valve to take advantage of all the efficiencies? The clack three button is very inefficient, especially when it's used for a water softener. It uses far more salt. It uses far more water. You're far better off with the clack five button that's metered. But what would it take to convert it over? How many parts would you need? What's the process? Is there a lot of programming? Is there a lot of internal parts that need to be replaced? Well, I'm going to show you how to convert it over using only three parts. I'm going to explain to you why you'd want to do it. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to do starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. This video is for you if you're a do-it-yourselfer, a plumber, or a water filtration specialist that wants to convert a clack three-button time clock valve over to a very efficient premium clack WS1 CC fully metered valve. Take it to take advantage of all the efficiencies that's built into this compared to the old three button valve. Some of the old three button valves don't even have a power saw backup. Now, although the clack three button time clock valve can be programmed and be used as a water softener, it's by far best used as a backwashable filter. Now, I've come across quite a few folks have been asking me that, that uh, someone else has installed them as a water softener for them and they're fed up with how inefficient they are and they want to know what would it take to, to uh, switch over to the, the, the more efficient, fully metered um, five button uh, CC valve? Do, do they have to replace the whole valve? Do they have to replace the whole water softener? No, actually, it's only three parts that you have to replace. I'm going to show you how to replace those three parts and I'm going to show you how to program it once you do. A couple of the other features that you may be interested in the CC valve is if you press the next button, you can view the gallons per minute flow rate, so you actually can see how many gallons per minute of water are flowing through your water softener right now. Press next again, it'll also show you how many gallons of capacity you have remaining before the water softener is going to go through a regeneration cycle. Now before we go any further, you definitely want to know how a water softener works. If you're not 100% sure, check out my video, I'll put a link in the description down below. We use the great Clack WS1 valve on all of our Hume water filtration products, but so do a lot of other companies. Companies like Nelson, Water Depot, uh, Viqua, they all use the Clack WS1 valve. So you just need to identify to make sure that uh, yours is a Clack WS1 valve. So one of the best ways to do is look at the valve body itself. So the first place to go to is the bypass. So there's a few manufacturers out there that have bypasses with red handles on them like this, but the only one that I've ever come across is the clack valve that has them that are pointed like this on one end and, and uh, flared out on the other end, like an arrow. And, uh, and that's a great feature. So definitely look for that. Another tell that it's a clack valve is that you've got the injector port on the top, this round injector port. And that's again another clue. Don't look at the front of the valve, that won't tell you if it's a clack valve or not. You need to look at this part in behind. Now the other thing you need to make sure of, we're talking about converting a clack three button time clock water softener to a five button uh, fully metered um, clack WS1 valve water softener, but it has to be a water softener. We're not talking here about converting a backwashable filter into a water softener, no. So you need to make sure that you have this um, brine elbow over here that connects to the brine line and you have to make sure of course that you've got the drain elbow that connects to the drain line. So to convert this three button time clock valve into a five button, you only need three parts. You need the meter, you need the face plate, and you need the circuit board. And you can get those parts from our e-commerce store, either watereastore.com in the United States or watereastore.ca in Canada. We offer free shipping and discount pricing. I'll put a link in the description down below. All right, so let's get this conversion started. So you're gonna pull out the two tabs on either side and you're gonna pull off the face plate and then you're gonna disconnect the power. Then you see there's three clips at the top. So at this time, you're just gonna lift the two outside ones and this whole assembly is going to come out and we'll just set that aside for now so if you go over the side here you can see that this is where the the, um, the meter is going to go so you just unscrew this 
And then there's a little plug in here. So we're going to pull that out, the screwdriver, like so. So that plug comes out. And here's the meter here. And uh, so we're just going to push this in. It just slides in, like so. And then you put the cap back on. And you don't have to really reef this on, it just hand tight. Then you just run the cable up through. So you look up here and you see this is where the cable goes in for the power supply. So you also want to run in from the back, run the cable up through in the same place for the meter. So push the power supply all the way in the cable and push this one all the way in. And the length should be about the same. Now you may have to do some trial and error to get the right length on this, but it's important that it's pushed all the way in because if it's not pushed all the way in, So I'll show you what I mean by that. So in the top up here, up here, that's where you need to push the cable through. And it has these little, um, these little uh, V's in there, if you like, that hold the cable in. So you have to kind of push that in. And like I say, you have to kind of approximate how much cable you need. So once you've done that, <clears throat> then you can put this back in. Now, if this part here sticks out too far, just turn this. That's the connecting rod that connects to the piston that moves back and forth. So you can just temporarily move that in like so, so it doesn't conflict. Let me put that back in. And you need to push it all the way back in so it snaps in. Okay, and then you route the cables. Turn this a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Route the cables down the side here. Has little hooks in the side here that you're right in, routing the cables through. Okay, great. I want to make sure you can see. Now the middle tab here, lift that up and the circuit... Oh, actually, we should unplug the motor from the circuit board. Lift this tab up and the, the circuit board will come away. And again, this is the old uh, three button. Now this one doesn't even have a power cell backup. You'll see in a second the power cell's up here. So with the new circuit board, make sure you handle it carefully, because uh, like all circuit boards, they are quite fragile. And uh, But this is where the power cell is up in here. Power cell backup. So then there's little pins here, you just line this up. It's actually the same pins that you used with the three button valve. Line that up and you'll see they poke right into the holes of the circuit board here and then just push the center in. Connect the motor up first, then connect the meter up second, and you'll see over here it says meter, that up, and then we hook up the power last. <laughs> so as you can hear, it, the valve repositions itself. So, I mean, that's it. That's all it takes to go from a very inefficient three button time clock valve to a super high efficient uh, contemporary five button clock WS1CC valve. It's, it's just those parts. And then once we've got that done, so we can put the faceplate back on. The new one is here. Okay, so now we do the programming. So you see that 1200 is, is flashing, so that's the current time. So we'll set the current time and uh, we'll say that it's 11.05 a.m. Just be careful of the a.m. and the p.m. in the top right-hand corner. Okay, so once, it, once you click set clock, it stops flashing. That tells you the time is set. And uh, so now you can check the other settings. So first we'll go through the sequencing. So we'll Press the next and the down button together and hold that down till the screen changes. Once it changes, do that again. Okay, and that, now we go through the sequencing uh, settings. So 1.0 just tells you that this is a one inch valve. And uh, 
I'm sure that there's very, very few larger than one inch valves that ever had a three button um, circuit board on them. So I'm sure yours will be a one inch valve. So then you press next and alt off. If it doesn't say alt off, then with these buttons, you would just change it. So alt off is, is for a, a water softener, a single tank, typical type water softener. Press next, DP off. Again, if it's not there, you would just change that to DP off. And then the first, it says backwash. So what that means is when it goes through regeneration, the first cycle is going to be a backwash. So you want that, yes. If it doesn't say that, you just click, check it, or click the up and the, or the down buttons so you get one backwash. Then two, uh, down brine. And then three, another backwash cycle. And then four is a rinse cycle. And five is the fill cycle. And this is very important. Make sure six, it says end, okay? And if it doesn't, like I say, use the up or the down buttons to get to that. All right, we've got that part done. So now we're going to go to the next in the down button. We're going to hold that down. Again, until the screen changes. Now make sure it says softening up here. It could also say filtering. We don't want that. We want softening because this is for a water softener. Next. So backwash, it says eight minutes. So make sure it says eight. If yours doesn't, use the up or the down buttons to make it eight. The down um, brine cycle, 60 minutes. And again, if it doesn't, use the up and down button. Then the third cycle is a backwash. You're going to want an eight minute backwash. Next, four minute rinse time. And then the pounds of salt. So this depends on how big your tank is. Okay, so this is on a 30,000 grain tank. So for 30,000 grains, you want to have 10 pounds of salt. Next. And, uh, and this is the capacity of the tank. So again, we typically look at efficiency of 80%. So a 30,000 uh, grain um, water softener tank, you would look at 80% efficiency. So 80% of 30,000 is 24,000. Just multiply 0.8 times 30,000 will give you 24,000. And if yours isn't, you just use these numbers to, ch or these uh, up and down button to change it. And then we want this set to auto. So that means it's going to automatically keep track of how much water you're using and then regenerate based on that. Then we press next. So the bottom left hand corner, it should say normal. Make sure yours does. If it doesn't, you would change it with, with these off and up and down buttons, sorry. And salt off. So it has the ability to keep track of how much salt you're using. I just shut that off. This is far more trouble than it's worth if you press it to on. And uh, it's confused so many people. We get so many service calls, people asking about that. Just leave it off. It's by far the best way to do it. And then we get back to the time. So the only thing that's left is the installer settings. So now you go next and up, hold that down. So this is where you set your hardness. Press next. And this is your override days. So for a water softer, you'd want to set that to 14. So what that means is uh, the water softener is going to meter your water usage, but if you, and yeah, meter your water usage, how many gallons of water you're using per day. But if you haven't used up this capacity within 14 days, it's going to automatically go after 14 days. So especially a great feature for um, uh, when these are installed in cottages or cabins where there's infrequent use. So every 14 days, it fluffs up that media bed. Press next. Whoops. And we're, we're um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me go back there for a second. I skipped the step on you. Sorry about that. Okay, so that's the hardness setting. That's the override. And this is the regen time. So typically, we set water softeners for a regen of 2 a.m. In other words, it's a time when there's uh, very little water usage in the home. Oh, I messed that up again. There we go. Next, next. So two, set clock. Did it again. <laughs> next. Okay, and then we press next to set the minutes. Like I say, we normally set it for 2 a.m. Um, but you can set it uh, for any time you want. Whenever there's wa very little water usage in the home, that's where you want to set it for. And then set clock goes back to normal. So let me just double check to make sure that got set. Yes, it did. All right, great. So. So now you've got, once you've made those few little changes, now you have a fully metered, up to, up to the minute, state-of-the-art water softener valve you've converted from your older time clock valve. And uh, 
It's amazing how easy it is. So a couple things to keep in mind. Once you've initially powered up the circuit board, it needs to be plugged in for at least 24 hours for the, the power cell backup to turn on and to retain all of your settings. The other thing is you've spent a lot of money on replacing that circuit board. Make sure it lasts. I definitely suggest you get a surge suppressor. Um, we have voltage fluctuations, especially if you're in a cottage or a cabin, and, uh, and that'll help uh, protect that circuit board. Click up here for my next video on water softers and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below.